Alrighty guys, I'm on the very last phase of the back purge fixture for Jody. And I told you in the last episode I had a couple of finishing touches that I would like to do. So what I what I want to do in this episode to finish this off is I had my friend Tom Utley over at Bond Industrial make me a very special tag. This is one of a kind. This is the only one that's made. And I wanted to have a tag to put on this uh, fixture to kind of symbolize the collaboration between Jody and I with this uh, with this workpiece right here. So Tom worked up this tag. He worked his magic and it looks great. It's an acid etch tag made in brass with uh, both the Weldmonger and the A-Bomb 79 logo. Also saying uh, Weldmonger and Booth Machine on there. So I wanted a place where I could put a serial number which this is probably only going to be a serial number of one. We'll probably put uh, 001 on there and I'm going to put the date there as well. And I'm going to make use of my Schmidt marking machine right here. I haven't shown this yet but I acquired this to be able to do tags like this. So we're going to use it for the first time on this tag right here and get it marked. And then after we get it marked, we're going to go ahead and install it onto the, uh, the purge fixture. And we're going to set it up in the mill. And we're going to drill it. We're going to drill the tag and the fixture to use drive screws and be able to use those to install on there. And then the last finishing touch I'm going to do is these clamp bars right here. I've decided instead of leaving them bare, what I want to do is use the Osfo Blue and actually uh, black them, you know, put the black oxide on there. I think that will make it look really nice and give it a very light amount of uh, corrosion resistance there as well. But I think that'll look pretty good too. So we'll use my Brownells Osfo Black. We'll get them cleaned real good and we'll go ahead and black them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll take a quick look at the Schmidt marking machine here. This was something that I picked up off eBay. And you have a dial here with the uh, letter, what, whatever letter, letter numbers that you want to stamp in the thing, and you just simply rotate it around. You line it up on the top to uh, indicate the letter that you want to stamp on the bottom there, okay? So to stamp it, you just pull the lever down, and every time you pull it down, the uh, table moves over one division, just like a typewriter. That's how, it, how it's set up. You've got a button here that you can uh, use to release it or position the table over where you want it to go. Still a little green at using it. <laughs> I've done a little bit of practicing on some other brass and I've got some aluminum pieces right here that I just practiced on recently. So you, you really got to get a little practice at what I'm finding. So there's there's a piece of brass, and it's just some thin brass right there that I stamped my uh, A-Bomb 79 in. And this is some aluminum that I did today to try to get the depth set. This is the same thickness as the brass of the tag that we want to uh, stamp right there. So, you know, we want to put it down there just like so. But those, those worked out pretty good. So you can set the depth with this knob on the top on uh, how far that you impress the uh, the metal there. There's also a little clamp, this little paddle right here. You push this back so that whenever you uh, put your your tag in there, you put it up inside there and then let go, and then it holds it for you so that it's not moving around. And you just line it up where you need to go, and then you start stamping it. All righty? And this is a... This is like an adjustable fence there too, so you can loosen this guy up and slide it up and down where it needs to go. So I would like to find some uh, some different size uh, letter wheels for this thing. They they did make them in different sizing. This one's three sixteenth, so I would like to find you know like say maybe one sixteenth and one eight, and have a variety of sizes on there. So a uh, useful tool if you're doing tags, you know, such as that right there or any kind of tags. So I picked it up because, uh, not just because of this, but I've got some tags that I'll be making for my fixture plates. This guy right here. So we'll be using this machine to uh, stamp those whenever I get around to making those. I think I'm ready to go ahead and start stamping this. 
I've got everything centered up so it's kind of easy to uh, look down from the side and get the lettering wheel centered up with the groove the where where you want it to all right I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp the serial number first that's what we're lined up on and I'm gonna do zero zero one so we'll just do three letters there so I think we are ready to go let's roll with it okay that looks pretty good zero zero all right so move the dial around to one go that looks pretty good I'm liking it even get you a little closer shot of the first stamps there all right so I'm going to reset and then do the date there next to it Alright, we're ready to uh, stamp our date in that tag now. I've got it pretty well centered up. It looks like it's right in the middle. I shifted the table over three positions so it'll be lined up with our first zero for the serial number. And I am going to stamp this thing the date that this video comes out. And this is also going to be the date that we consider this thing completed. So that's going to be March the 2nd, 2019. We're just going to use our numbers. So we're going to do three. All right, there's our three. Now we're going to use a forward slash to separate it. All right, so now we want our two. I'm not going to go zero two. We're just going to go three two 2019. That's how I like my dates. All right, we'll go back to our forward slash. All right, so two. Zero. And then one. And our last letter, or number, is going to be nine. There we go. All right. And that looks good too. It's pretty well centered up. That looks great. Let's get it out of there. One more little shot as is in the in the marking machine. There we go. Serial number one, March 2nd, 2019. Love it. Really like the, gonna like having this uh, marking machine for doing things like that. Very cool. I want to go ahead and give this thing a polish and see if it'll brighten up that brass a little bit. I'm just using my uh, Miracle polishing cloth there, the one that we used before on the copper. You can see that's what it looks like as it's been sitting up for a while.
Yeah, I think that's going to work great there. I just wanted to do one spot and see, but I'm going to go ahead and polish the whole thing though with it. All right, once we get it buffed, get it polished with the polishing cloth, just give it a buff, I mean, with the, uh, I use a microfiber cloth. The thing is shining like new money. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's move on to our next phase and get this thing mounted. So this is the end that I want to put the uh, put the new tag. I want it on the end. We're going to have it centered up. I actually like the size of it. It's not a it's not a little small tag. It's actually got some size to it, and it's easy to see. I just think it's uh, a really good contrast against the. Uh, the yeah, aluminum there so this is all standard sizing so I can equally space it an inch and a half on each side and then we'll be an eighth of an inch from the edge between uh, the copper there and then the uh, the bottom of it so I'm gonna get it squared up and what <clears throat> what I plan to do I'm gonna get it squared up and we are going to put a piece of tape across it to hold it in place and that should suffice to be able to drill this in place. Just like that. That tape should work really good. And we're just on the outside of the, the width of the tape there. So that worked out pretty good there too. This is the little kit that I've started for the drive screws. And this is what we'll be using to uh, hold the tag to the aluminum. So I've got double lot, zero, two, and four and quarter inch links. I've also made up a little a brass punch there with the radius on the end and we can use that to drive them in. I've got a, a set of tweezers here that you use to uh, hold them there just like that. So I'm going to be using the number four size uh, quarter inch length and it should look really good against that tag there. Okay we're ready to drill our holes. I trimmed in the angle plate so that we're nice and straight. And what we're going to do, I've already got centered up on the tag there using my <clears throat> edge finder. We're going to be doing a center distance of uh, this direction right here. We'll, off the center line is uh, 1 and 3 eighths from the center line. And then center line this way on your y-axis is going to be inch and an eighth. Got all that set up. I did some testing on this aluminum block right here to make sure that I had the correct drill size and you know how it, how it uh, presses in there. So... I'm going to be using a number 37 drill bit for the hole that the uh, drive screw is pressed into. And then I'll come back with a number 32 drill and uh, drill the, the brass, just, just enough clearance where the drive screw kind of slides through it. I'm doing this with my thumb here just to kind of hold it flat. I know you probably can't see it. But... All right, I'm using the center drill just to make a divot to uh, help make sure that the drill follows it straight. We're in our 
aluminum now. I've got a depth set on the uh, quill up here too, by the way. Yeah, see, I need to hold on to that tag. It's trying to lift it just a bit. Chips are trying to push it up. I think as I drill them, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drive it in there too to help secure it. All right, we'll go with our number 32 just to provide some clearance through the brass. Just like that. You can see the tweezers work really good to be able to hold that little thing. Alright, it fits through the brass good. I'm just going to give it a little tap to start it. Then we got our brass punch here that I've made up. Try to eliminate making a big flat spot on the end of the, the drive screw. And it looks like we're there. Perfect. That looks good. Alright. We just drilled the last hole there. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. What you guys think? You like it? I know I do. I think it makes it look really nice having that tag on there. All right, so we're getting close. All we, all we need to do now, let's go over to our clamp bars and go ahead and do our OSFO black on those. The two clamp bars to prep them, all I'm going to simply do is just clamp them down here and I'm just going to rub them down with this uh, Scotch Bright just to kind of buff them. Just like so, we'll do that on all sides, and I'll uh, clean them real good, make sure they're good and dry, and then, uh, then we'll go to our Osfo Black. Okay, we've got both of the bars scotch brighted and cleaned off, and this is what I'm going to be using, the Brownells Osfo Blue, and my friend Alex Brown is the one that uh, you know, showed me this stuff right here. He's a caveman welder on Instagram, and he uses this stuff, and it works good for uh, simple things like this, you know, little parts and jobs and tools in the shop. It's marketed toward uh, gun bluing, but it works good out here in the shop. I'm going to move one of these out of the way, just kind of focus on one at a time. And the way that I use this is that use like a cotton swab here. 
and just kind of soak it in, <clears throat> rub it all over your part, and then, then wipe it off. Look at that, instant black. Pretty neat how it works. Now I've got some Q-tips that I'll use for the slots. Try to get them in there real good. So going over it real good on the outside. And sometimes you might have to do it twice. Let's go ahead and let's get the back side. We got plenty of uh, the fluid still in our cotton ball here. It's working good to get in there in that slot there. Don't don't stick the dirty in back in the fluid. Always use a, cl a clean end or a clean cotton ball. Put that out of the way so we don't spill it. Let's go ahead and give it a wipe down. looking pretty good a couple spots there that I didn't get very good I'm gonna hit that again all right we'll set this one off to the side and let it completely dry and then we'll burnish it with the steel wool we have some fine steel wool here. Burnish it and then we'll probably black it one more time. Give it a nice buff with the fine steel wool and it'll kind of brighten it and polish it out really. <clears throat> All right, I'll keep working on that. We'll get both of them done. I think that I want to blue it one more time and try to get it just a little bit darker, a little bit more consistent there. There they are finished up. I think they look good and they are ready to go so just about done here what I want to do I'm going to give this thing one more clean I'm going to give it a, a nice little polish is what I'm going to do try to clean it up some and then put it all back together for a final time I am going to use my uh, polishing cloth here and go ahead and Give this aluminum a nice polish and it'll it'll really shine well. There she is, all buffed and shined. 
We even did the bottom. Just a very light polish, really just to kind of clean it. All right, let's put this thing back together. All right, guys, I think this project's finally coming to a close. We finally got all the machine done, and it is ready to go into Jody's hands. And I sure hope Jody, he likes this and appreciates it. I'm sure he's going to appreciate it. I just, uh, it's probably turned into a, a little more of a, a blingy type machining project than what we were first talking about doing. But that's just kind of, you know, what I like to do, especially when I get to take my time here in my shop and have a little bit of fun at building the project. You know, things like this, uh, not necessarily is something that I'm worried about how much time I'm spending on it or how fast to get it done to get it out to a customer's door. You know, this is uh, this is just something that I'm doing between me and Jody. You know, it's just I'm helping him out and we are enjoying the collaborations with each other on, on each other's channels. So, you know, he's gonna be taking this uh, part right here and he's gonna be using it on his channel and uh, doing some welding. So um, I've got one more little final touch to, uh, to do to this thing. And I was waiting on some, uh, some new bolts to come in. I decided to, to uh, take these bolts out and go with some different bolts. So let me bring you down here a little closer and we'll swap those things out. So like I said, we've got some new bolts. So what I've decided to go with is I bought these stainless steel flange bolts from McMaster Car and I've been waiting on them to come in. I just ordered them yesterday, so I was waiting for them to come in today so that we could close this video out. So I want to bring up something about this uh, design that I didn't think about. I mean, I'm just admitting to you that I didn't think about this going into the project. I was given some prints. You know, Jody got some prints off the Internet, and he gave them to me, and I didn't really... I studied them to make sure all the dimensions were there and everything that I needed to complete the job, but I wasn't thinking about having recessed bolt heads here, you know, to keep from maybe, you know, being in the way of your hand. I, I totally agree that these bolts are kind of being the way if you're wanting to do a long weld, if you're trying to, you know, run your hand along here. But I didn't realize that until after I drilled and tapped this block and after I milled these slots right here. You know, once I did that, I realized, well, maybe we should have used some cap head bolts. The problem with using cap head bolts, if I was to use half inch cap head bolts, is that the heads of a uh, socket head is a half inch thick. This plate is a half inch thick. So it would look kind of goofy if you still had some of that socket head sticking up out of this slot right here. Really what we needed to use was something like maybe a, a 3 8 diameter socket head bolt so that we could have milled a 3 8 slot and then milled the appropriate counterbore slot for the head to recess down in there and still have an eighth of an inch in the bottom of this plate to be able to hold it down. But I missed that going into the project. That was my fault that I missed it. And, you know, and I, I admit that that was a mistake that I made. But I still made it per the print. Okay, it's still right. And, and Jody is still uh, happy with how it turned out. And, you know, if we ever have to do another one, uh, we will definitely take that into consideration. And anybody else that's gonna, that decides they want to build one, then take that as a learning opportunity. So here's the bolts that I picked up. These are half 13 stainless steel flange bolts. There's not a lot of torque that have to go down on these things. So these are just simple clamping bolts to hold a piece of metal down to this fixture here. But I'm already liking the way they look. You don't have that washer jiggling around, taking up just a little bit less space. They're a little bit smaller uh, hex size. Those are 9 16 hex. And I actually like the contrast better. I think it matches just a little bit better when you're looking down at the uh, flathead bolts there holding the copper bar in there. So there we go. Let's, uh, let's move them out just a little so you can see the, the aluminum and snug it down. And there it is. So. I'm real happy with how it looks. It, it just turned out great. Real happy with the tag there. Got to thank my buddy Tom again for making that for me. Did a beautiful job on that tag. I like the way the, the bluing turned out on the clamp bars. So we are good to go. I still have one final thing to do to this. I almost forgot because I'm not used to doing it yet. 
but I've got my stamp here, that Buckeye engraving made for me, and I haven't used it on a job yet. This is going to be the first job that I put this stamp on, so let's go ahead and do that now. I think I'm going to put it right there above the tapped hole, in between the, the hole and the copper bar, and I'm not going to scale it out. I'm just going to eyeball this thing like any, any maker would, and hopefully it's going to be a one-shot deal. Here we go. There we go. You got to be careful. I practice a little bit with it, and if you, uh, if you, sometimes you'll get a a ghosting effect if you uh, if you hit it too hard, it'll bounce and actually do it twice. So I think that one turned out pretty good, though. We got it. There we go. Our first official A bomb seventy nine hallmark on our first job. Cool. I decided to go ahead and stamp the clamp bars with it as well. So we got a hallmark there and a hallmark there. So I've had a lot of comments, uh, both in the uh, videos and the Instagram feeds of, you know, showing the pictures of this. A lot of people not understanding what this is or how it's used. And what this is, is a, it's a welding fixture that purges the backside of a weld seam with argon. So it's mainly going to be used, I believe, it's mainly going to be used for just test welding is all. This isn't something that you're using for a specific welding procedure that's needed. I believe that Jody is wanting this for testing purposes, you know, for, for his videos. So you, uh, you know, loosen the clamp bars moving back and you lay your two pieces of material. You have a butt weld that goes right down the middle where this channel is and all the holes are drilled. And you know, you hook your gas line to it. That's what this is for. You're going to have your your argon line coming in and connecting to that. You turn your argon on, you know, your flow meter, and it's going to purge this area with argon gas. All right. So that's going to protect the backside of the weld from the atmosphere, and I believe in theory create a much nicer weld there. So that's the gist of what this is used for. I'm sure he's going to use it for probably, you know, stainless, aluminum, and steel, and just test different joints there with the uh, back purge to see how it does. So, so that, that's really what it's for right there. And I look forward to seeing Jody uh, put this thing to use on his channel. You know, it's uh, a lot of guys are talking about how pretty it is and you shouldn't be welding on it, but you know what I was taught? It's only new one time. After that, you know, it's, it's fair game. So... You know, we've got our, we got our pictures of it and we got our video proof of making it, but I'm ready to see Jody take this thing and uh, start putting it to use. Uh, there's nothing wrong with getting it dirty and, um, and making it look like a tool that's, that's being used around the shop. So that's going to be it, guys. Uh, Jody, thanks for collaborating with me on this. I really enjoyed the, the, uh, the job here and uh, helping you out. And uh, Jody and I have been talking around and kicking around the idea of him coming down here to my shop and doing some uh, video work with me here in my shop, you know, do some welding, uh, possibly do some spray welding for him to share on his channel. And, and who knows, you know, that's, we've been kind of kicking around different ideas. So uh, we're still working on that, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting him down here in the uh, A-bomb shop and doing a little bit of welding with me. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the series, and we'll see you on the next set of videos, okay?